Okay, let's move to one of the most challenging SIMAN stations, which is the PPH. Though it's one of the easiest and one of the most direct stations, but still it's challenging because it has some sort of definitive management right now. Okay, so let's start the station. The station say that the patient has just come out of the fifth delivery and she's feeling unwell right now. Your nurse colleague is waiting for you inside the cubicle. So the moment you'll enter the cubicle, you'll find your nurse colleague jumping into you. Doctor, doctor, help me, please. Uh, Mrs. XYZ, she has been deteriorating after her fifth delivery, doctor, and she's feeling unwell. Introduce yourself and reassure the nurse and say, I'm here to help you. We'll sort it out for the patient in a while. Do you know what happened to the patient? She will tell you, yes, doctor, she has come out of her fifth delivery and you see her vitals. There could be a monitor inside the cubicle or there could be a news chart but mostly there is a monitor and you will find that the blood pressure is low and sometimes the oxygen is low as well. Um, you can verbalize that the blood pressure of my patient is low and the oxygen is low. Uh, can you tell me more about what happened please? Yes doctor, she has come out of the fifth delivery and uh, she has been bleeding. Um, ask, the pa ask the nurse right now uh, how much she has bleed, she will show you a bucket full of blood. Uh, now the cause of bleeding after the purse, after the delivery is probably postpartum hemorrhage. So now there are four causes. Number one, retained placenta. Number two, trauma. Number three, bleeding disorder. Number four, uterine atony. And since she has come out of the fifth delivery, most common cause is uterine atony. So simply ask the nurse, have you seen the placenta? She will tell you yes, doctor, uh, or she will tell you no. Okay, ask her about is the placenta completely expelled? She will tell you yes, doctor, or I don't know. Um, okay, this is number one. Number two, are you, are you aware about any bleeding disorder our patient is having? She will tell you yes or no. Um, do you have any idea if our patient had any trauma during the delivery or not? She will tell you yes or no. But probably you know that since the fifth delivery, so you trend atony is the most probable cause. So tell the nurse right now that my patient or our patient is definitely having right now a hypovolemic shock due to postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, excuse yourself from the nurse, move to the patient. Hello, I am Dr. X, one of the junior doctors here. Can I confirm your name, please? Sometimes the patient will respond and sometimes she will not reply because the patient is confused. So uh, you will tell the nurse, okay, can you help me, please? I need to attach to, uh, I need to, first of all, uh, ask the nurse if the patient is having any smoke or cough. She will tell you no, doctor. Then uh, place oxygen uh, over the face of the patient. But before that, I need to have a look at the airway of the patient quickly. Okay, so have a look at the airway of the patient. Open the mouth, you will see nothing. This just mean that there is no obstruction in the airway. Okay, ask the nurse to place the big mask of oxygen and under breathing mask, 100% oxygen. She will tell you, okay, doctor, assume the oxygen is improving right now. Move to the B, which is the breathing. Listen to the chest in 10 seconds. You will find the chest is clear and free. So the breathing portion is normal and the oxygen saturation matches this and the respiratory rate is fine. Okay. Number three is the C, which is the core here. The, the core, you will tell that the blood pressure of the patient is low. This means that we need to attach two white bore cannulas. She will ask you which cannula, doctor? C, orange cannula. Uh, doctor, we don't have orange. Uh, okay, attach the gray. So, number one, orange. Number two, alternative is gray. Uh, okay, where shall I place them, doctor? Place them in the arm or in the hand. Okay, doctor. What should I do right now? Um, okay, can you take some samples from one cannula and inject oxytocin on the other side? Which sample? Uh, the samples are full blood count, okay, uh, LFTs and KFTs and ABG. Also, don't forget clotting, clotting screen and more importantly, cross match and blood group for units of blood. And on the other side, I will inject 10 units of oxytocin. Uh, bolus 10 units oxytocin bolus okay so now I give oxytocin and from the other side I took sample okay so now you can attach one bag of pre-warmed Hartman solution most probably the bag will be one liter uh, so you will ask the nurse to attach this bag 
Meanwhile, you will start doing the uterine massage. To do the uterine massage, you have to place your hand just below the umbilicus, your non-dominant hand below the umbilicus, okay, to squeeze or to roll over the fundus of the uterus and support the pil the, um, the lower part or the pelvic part of the uterus by your dominant hand, which is the right hand. Um, okay. So uh, the nurse did the fluids and you are doing your trim massage meanwhile. So basically this is like, um, how can I say this is multitask, a multitask station in which you have to do something and the nurse do other things. So um, then after giving the fluid, uh, she will ask you doctor over how long you will say over 15 minutes. In any hypo, either hypoglycemia, hypovolemia or whatever, you will give over 15 minutes. Okay. So look at the patient monitor right now, you'll find the blood pressure is still improving. It's now 95 over 65, which is improving slightly, but still, uh, it's not normal. So I ask the nurse to attach one more bag of pre-warmed heart milk solution to the other side. Okay, this is two liters so far, over 15 minutes again. And after that, ask the nurse to attach urine catheter to empty the bladder and to monitor the urine output of the patient. This is very important in any hypovolemic shock and especially in the postpartum hemorrhage. You have to empty the bladder to avoid any further compression on the uterus and also like, like facilitate the uterus to expand or to contract or whatever. Okay. So after that, actually what I will do right now, uh, the blood pressure is still not improving so much. So what will we do right now? We will need to inform our senior, thank the nurse, and we need to inform our senior right now. Uh, the, at this point, actually the examiner will take over and she will tell you, doctor, I'm your senior consultant from this department uh, and I need to know what's wrong. You will tell the examiner that my patient is having hypovolemic shock due to postpartum hemorrhage. Why, doctor, you think so? Because my patient vitals show, and you will say the vitals uh, from the beginning. I mean, the oxygen was low, the blood pressure was low, and the pulse rate was high, and the breathing rate was high, temperature was normal. Okay, and since the patient has come out of the fifth of delivery, this means that it's probably postpartum hemorrhage. What could be the causes, doctor? The causes could be either bleeding disorder or trauma or retained placenta. But since my patient has come out of the fifth delivery, I, I suspect uterine atony to be the most probable cause here. What have you done, doctor? I have given. You, you will say what you have given. Beside that, I have attempted uterine massage till my senior takes over. Okay, what's your next step, doctor? You will tell the, the examiner that, first of all, I need to give my patient further uterotonic drug, either carboprost 0.25 mg IM or misoprostol 1000 microgram per rectal. This is to stimulate the trying contraction. And if the bleeding continue, I will give the patient tranexamic acid 1 gram IV. Okay. And for any hypovolemic shock, they're always associated coagulopathy. So I need to correct the coagulopathy by giving fresh frozen plasma. And if possible, I may consider blood transfusion to my patient. Okay, what is the further plan of management, doctor? I will now, if the bleeding continue, I will need to examine me and my senior will examine the uterus under anesthesia for any perforation or retained placenta. And if any trauma or perforation is found, it will be sutured under anesthesia. Otherwise, we will consider doing uterine packing or balloon tamponade to stop the bleeding before any procedure. Okay, what's next, doctor? If those methods or these measures didn't help, we might consider moving the patient to the theater to do uterine artery ligation or internal iliac artery ligation or ultimately hysterectomy to spare the patient life. So simply, this station is hypovolemic shock, but the only extra things are the oxytocin and the C portion, which is very important because it's definitive here, and preferably you give the oxytocin as bolus before giving the fluid because you already knew that most probably it is uterine atony. Uh, otherwise, you will give the oxytocin at drip or infusion, 
and then you give it as infusion uh, the nurse might ask you about the rate of infusion and you will be in dilemma so better give it as bolus and it will not harm the patient at anything and actually it's useful because it acts instantly and it's recommended to be the first line treatment in the primary postpartum hemorrhage due to uterine atony. Okay, this is the station.